Hello, it's Deborah from Attic Lane and I'm revisiting this journal. Now I showed you this as a blank journal before I went away on holiday a few weeks ago and my intention was to take it with me and work on it while I was away and uh, you get an idea of uh, either how good my holiday was or how much I spent on uh, bits and bobs um, and tickets and all sorts of things. Um, and I thought it would be nice to show you the journal again now that I've used it. A um, couple of points to make about this. Uh, one of the reasons that I wanted to make a junk journal and then take it away with me and use it while I was away was to see the application. To how do you use a junk journal? I see them a lot. They look great. They're very beautiful. But what do you do with them? So that was the reason that I, I made mine ready for my holiday. And I will share with you what I learned about using a junk journal. I'm now a bit addicted, but I'm going to show you some things, uh, some ways that I used it, some, some pockets that I added and why I really like this type of journal. But to give you a contrast, I'm going to show you a book I made some years ago, 2009, this, this one was made. So this used to be my standard way of recording events. I would take photographs, I would print the photographs and then I would make up the book and um, you know, capture some memories in the book. And that's great. It's a very logical format. I usually went um, from the start to the finish and I had the middle in there. So it was like a little storybook. And that's that's fine. It's still lovely to come back and rediscover these. But what I found with a junk journal is that you come at it in a very different way. So the first thing to note is that I took this charm off. I had a charm on it originally. I really liked the colours of that charm and it was it was up there and it drove me nuts and I got rid of it because every time I tried to open a book it was rattle, rattle, rattle. So I found that a bit of a nuisance. So that's fine, I will use that on another occasion. I also took away with me to work on my journal. I took a little kit. You're gonna get blinded with lights, so that's gonna be quite annoying for you. Let me just do this. There you go. This is the kit that I took away with me. So the first thing that I took was this little HP sprocket printer. I, I'm still, old enough to be amazed by this technology that this tiny little thing is a printer and these are the uh, photo papers that you put with it. It doesn't use inks, it has uh, this clever zinc photo paper and it just prints out the colours that are embedded in the, uh, in, the in the paper. It's not the best printer in the world, you don't get fantastic quality photographs, but it does give you something that is usable. I also took Vintage Photo um, Distress Oxide ink. I took some glue. I took a little uh, foam swab. I had some uh, some string stuff. I also took one of my uh, word stamps, which I like and I use a lot. And I cut down, in preparation, I cut down some little white cards that I knew would be a good size for my photographs that I printed using the tiny HP sprocket printer. I took a pen so I could make some notes and a pencil and an ordinary pen. And I took some ribbon, I took some little bits of ephemera that I'd printed off. I made some stickers and cut them out and took them with me because I thought maybe I would use those. In the end, I didn't. I took some little envelopes that I had in my stash, some pieces of lace. I also took some uh, book pages. There we go. I took some book pages so that I could, um, I could make extra pockets if I needed them. I have to say, I didn't think I would need to make extra pockets, but I made so many. So many. I also took uh, glue in addition to my uh, liquid glue. I also took a, a tape runner um, and another lighter colour of brown because it sort of matched with the sepia and the dark tones. They work together beautifully. And a pencil sharpener and a little bit more lace and some brads. And I think that was it. Oh yeah, black pen. So yeah, that was my little kit that I took away with me, including my mini printer. And it all went together in a little box and it was nice and easy to travel with that. So, um, <laughs> it's a bit fat now. I used some of the um, thread, I don't know what you would call this, it's lovely, it's cotton, it's sort of got some texture to it. And I took this with me because uh, I didn't know if I'd want to tie things in. In the end I made myself a new tag. A uh, new tie for the book because originally I had a piece of elastic and I just thought the elastic uh, kind of cheapened it. It didn't look so good. 
So let me show you what I really, really, really liked about this book in comparison to this book, which is a very logical, sequential flip through with lots of photos. This book is more of a voyage of discovery because already we're mm, 10 days since I, I was using this and I've, I've still got tiny bits to finish it off, but it's 10 days since I made this and already I've forgotten how it all worked together. And so this book contains secrets. Every time you open it, it's got a surprise in there and the surprise is, oh, I forgot that was there. So whereas with this book, it's all very logical and you flip through and it's like, oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. This book is more, oh, what's in there? What's that about? What's that story? Now, this particular story is about my dog and uh, our, our van and where we were staying. And it doesn't have to be quite as formal as, as the way I've done this book. This is far more relaxed. I've just got a piece of paper. I've written some notes on here. I've added a photo that links to the story that I'm telling. And then this pops into this envelope. There's something else in here. See, I've already forgotten. Oh, here we go. So if I turn over, I've got um, a nicely decorated uh, paper clip and I've got a little story about where we stayed and uh, what we had for breakfast one particular morning. Um, and in here, in this pocket, I've got a photograph. I need to write on the back of this. This is one of the things that I need to finish off, but I've got a photograph that will pop in there. And also I've got an extra little pocket in here, which I know has got another little picture in it as well. So, and a, a picture that sits in behind this. So one of the things that I had to do was I found that I had to add my uh, extra tuck spots because I had these originally in pockets and I found that by adding them to the side, I gave myself a bit more space to uh, to add all of my photographs. In my travel notes, for example, this is uh, this is quite sweet. This is my dog laughing. Um, <laughs> he laughs quite a lot. Um, and I've got photographs in here, and this is just a tiny little book that's sewn at the top. And I've got pictures and uh, places that we went and things that we did is in here, along with the ticket that gave us access to the the activity that we were doing. This particular one. Uh, was the day that we climbed the largest sand dune in Europe, in Arcachon in France. And uh, so that's a really good memory. It's a really nice thing to, to have. And I'll, I'll remember that. It's got all the details on there. And it's lovely just to be able to tuck that little, um, that ticket along with the photographs, along with that memory. And that is all a sealed memory. And so when you come back to the book, having not seen it for a few days or a few weeks or a few months, it's like, oh yeah, do you remember we did that? This, um, this is another example of where I had to make myself a whole load of extra spaces because I got some wonderful things um, at a couple of little markets that we went to. So this is a photo, this is the uh, standard size of the photo and this is uh, one of those white uh, pieces of card that I cut out previously uh, to take with me. And I wrote in there where we'd gone, what sort of, this is a, a photograph of some of the things that I got. Um, and I've made some notes on the back of that as well. Um, so, for example, these are some little things that I picked up at a market. There's a postcard, there's a, a greetings card, and I've put all of these together with that particular memory in there. So my book is completely out of order. Whereas this book is logical and sequential, this book is gathered memories in one particular pocket. So it's not necessarily... Um, correct by, uh, you know, sequentially. In here was a little book um, that I I put together before we went away. And again, I've got a, a photo of my, my dog. Uh, you can't see properly, but he's digging a hole on the beach. Um, he thinks he can dig his way out of that beach. So this little booklet contains one evening's memories and they're all gathered there together. And somewhere in there I've written the date. So I've made some notes in that little book that match the photographs that I've put in there. But it's it's a memory. So rather than capturing an event as a sequence, this type of journaling, which, which I really have warmed to, captures moments. And they don't have to be in a particular order. This is um, a restaurant that we went to. I think that's the bill. I think I paid for that bill. And then we have more tickets here for places that we travelled to. Now, this is a place called La Hume. Now, I would never have remembered that we stayed at that little place, but I've got the ticket, so uh, so I know where we were. And I think that might have been a visit to Bordeaux. I can't, 
I can't remember. I won't read that because uh, you don't need to know. But the, the point is that um, all of the travel that we did in one day, that's all of my tickets from, from that event. This is what I mean about originally I had these stored in in the pocket because I thought it was just a nice thing to have but as I went through the book and I didn't have space for everything I wanted to add I found myself sticking these, thank goodness I took my glue, I stuck these uh, in place so that I then created a little tuck spot in there. This is another one, so this is a day out that we had at La Rochelle and the other thing I liked about this is it's so informal so I didn't have to have the you know a square piece of paper or the right piece of paper I just took what I had and I made a note and so I have some photographs from La Rochelle on my little uh, piece of paper and the colours at La Rochelle were beautiful and I've made myself, I had some colour pencils with me and I made myself a sort of um, uh, a colour palette of uh, the colours that we saw at La Rochelle because at some point I will use those, I'll do something with those colours, they will be inspirational for me for, for something. And again it's our it's our travel tickets, our parking tickets and our, our, um, our bus tickets into La Rochelle. Um, this was a pocket where I had some words that I'd printed out on sticky backed uh, white paper. These were great actually because I did use these a lot and I did add them to places that we'd been. As an example I'd printed out La Rochelle so I just added that to that particular day's memories. Um, this is um, a sort of a belly band, <laughs> quite ridiculously. Look at this, They're beautiful beautiful artwork. Look at that beautiful artwork. Do you know what it is? Do you know what it is? It's a baguette bag. Isn't that just stunning? Isn't it beautiful? So I thought that's too nice to just throw in the bin. So I've kept it. <laughs> and this is a great place to uh, to store things like that because how else would you store something like that? You could stick it in a pocket but you wouldn't glue it into a sort of a, a scrapbook necessarily I don't think. And then uh, in this pocket here this was a little booklet that I made of a visit to uh, a, a very pretty a town. Photographs in there. Oh look, this is my dog. This is my dog sleeping. How cute is my little dog? So, um, and that's just sealed with one of the brads and a little bit of the um, the same uh, ribbon stuff as is around my book. And that tucks away into that. And that's another evening's memory. So the whole thing was like that. Um, just, oh, here's a, a postcard that I, I bought. Um, beautiful vintage postcard. I think this dated from something like 1909. It's over a hundred years old. It's over a hundred years old. Beautiful, beautiful little um, postcard. I got loads of postcards. I'm going to show you those. Don't worry, I'm going to show you those. Um, and here's a, a piece of paper from a book that I bought at a, a, a market. I made some little notes on, um, on there and I created another little tuck space with uh, some ribbony, hessian ribbon type stuff that I'd taken. And that fills um, another page and reminds me of something else that we did. And here are more, more of these um, wonderful postcards. Um, that one's of Lords, and um, it, it, again, it's very, very old. This is uh, 1908, 100, over 100 years old. Beautiful. These are um, some more mounted uh, photographs that I did of uh, a visit to Bordeaux, and I've got. Hello Buster, you're talking to me. And I've got some more, so all of these are of Bordeaux and again I made, um, I used my plain white cards and I, I did some inking on them just to make them a little bit more interesting and I used one of my pre-typed um, pre words on the white sticky backed plastic, uh, sticky backed paper and I used that to, um, to remind myself of where I've been and again I've got travel notes and this has got various little bits of writing for where we were, this is another receipt for something um, and uh, a little uh, a little space for a, a tag to be stuck as well. So as I go through this book and here's more about our travel, we always travel independently um, and we took the tunnel and we just drove uh, wherever we were going and it was a nice restful uh, break. Another postcard and I created a, a double tuck space here actually so it could go in there or it could go in there and then another um, couple of postcards which I've I've held in place using a paper clip but I've protected it so I've wrapped an envelope around it. I think there's something on the inside of this envelope as well. So I've wrapped the envelope around it, put in an extra little scrap of paper just to protect that card because some of these cards are very very old. And that's my book and what I really really have enjoyed about this is that it doesn't have to follow in order, it doesn't have to be sequential. So if I've been updating my book after a couple of days on the road and I can't remember what order things happened in, I've grouped it by memory and I just think that's, I think that's a really lovely, fun way to do things. Now, 
you could of course um, add things in their in their proper time sequence of course you can it's not to say you can't or you shouldn't but I found it very liberating, the junk journal, really liberating. And when you go back and you read it, having not seen it for a few days, it's lovely to be reminded of where all the little tuck spaces are and all the little, can I fold this out? What's in there? Is there something else in there? And it's fun. It's a really fun way to revisit your memories. So that's the journal. Bear with me. I've got lots to show you. So we went to something called a, re a vide grenier. And a vide grenier is like a flea market, an open air flea market. And I got lots of books and things, and I practiced my French a little bit, and I haggled with the, the stall holders, and that was great fun. And I got lots of uh, lots of discounts, and it was just good fun. So the difference between a brocant and a vide grenier is a vide grenier is literally sort of um, when people are emptying their attics or their, their houses and they want to get rid of some stuff that they found in their old attics and they take them to a, a like an open air flea market and a brocante is basically an indoor flea market and you pay more and that's that's the big difference I found so I just want to show you very quickly some of the things that I got I got this for one euro this is one euro gorgeous gorgeous little tiny tiny books and they've got poems in them lovely little poems in them I mean you could you could take those out you could add a little page of a poem into um, into a junk journal you could use it as a front cover piece perhaps because there are some pictures in there so there were four of those tiny little books in this really nice pretty little box um, so I'm looking forward to using those I also found um, oh, so many postcards I also found a lovely blank book um, which I think is I think it's a policeman's notebook. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, uh, yeah, Le Gendarme. I think it probably is. And they, they're supposed to write down there, I was proceeding in an easterly direction when a robber came up to me and said, oi, governor, or whatever it is that they have to write in their books. So that was uh, another purchase. Now this, this was one of my favourites. This is an almanac from 1953. And it's just full of adverts and advice. I actually found myself reading it because there's some good recipes in here as well. Um, and they just tell you interesting things that you might need to know to get yourself through 1953. But it's a fabulous, fabulous book and I'm really looking forward to selecting things from here. There's, there's advice on uh, the highway code, how to drive sensibly, look at this. I mean it's, it's absolutely brilliant. So that was one of my, my best purchases I think because it's it's got so much local life in there. These are some uh, cards, playing cards. The reason I got these is because, of course, I'm so used to seeing Jack King Queen that it's unusual to see D and V and uh, what, I don't know where all the other ones are, but it's basically little playing cards, um, but they are quintessentially French playing cards. Then there was uh, a Paris, this is brilliant, a Paris timetable book. So this is for um, the metro and the buses and it's it's actually a very clever book it's got maps it's also got um, everything by alphabetical order if you want to look it up um, but then it also it's got little maps of the routes so you know exactly where you're going and then somewhere I think it was divided up into arrondissement yeah so here we go so numbers 1 to 20 something and these are all the different arrondissements in France so it's in Paris rather so you know if you're traveling in you know you're going to go to arrondissement uh, 13 you know to turn to 13 it will tell you everything you need to know for that area of Paris all the transport and everything and it's, I mean even just as a little book that's a brilliant little book but for me for journaling this is fabulous really fabulous really exciting to to think of things I could do with that there is um now I was a bit klutzy I didn't read these properly um I should have done these are books for soldiers in combat uh, why do you even need it I don't know I don't know why you need these uh, this is for fusiliers and there's advice in here about how to be a fusilier now the reason I got a bit bamboozled and and bought two of these without actually sensibly reading the front look at that the com soldier in combat what was I thinking? But what I really liked was I found this little little piece of paper in, in one of the books and that was that was the moment at which I thought, oh I've got to have that book because this is, I don't know how old this is but the writing is beautiful, it's, it's just a lovely lovely old thing to have and it popped out of one of these books. So I have two books on 
how to be a soldier. I don't know how I'm going to use those. Um, I've also got um, a new grammar book. So this is lovely. This is for, aimed at school children. And look at the writing. Beautiful, beautiful copper plate handwriting. And that handwriting appears. Let's see if I can find you one quickly on none of those. That handwriting, here we go. It appears on these cards. The writing is beautiful. And when you look at this book, which is aimed at children, it's aimed at for the for the little ones, infant class, you can see why they had such beautiful handwriting, because they it was instilled in them from a very, very early age. Um, so this is a wonderful record. Aimed at children, beautiful little pictures, lovely little sentences and exercises, beautiful handwriting. It's just it's a lovely, lovely thing. I think that was about two euros. Just to give you an idea of the sorts of prices uh, that I was uh, prepared to pay or I was haggling. And then, and then there were so many of these. Now, the guys selling postcards, uh, they know that their postcards have a value. I didn't get an awful lot of bargains on my postcards. I managed to pay a little bit less if I was buying a job lot, but essentially they know the value. So they're not going to sell anything cheaply. But these are some of the postcards that I bought um, at the Vide Grenier, um, which was great fun. There's some uh, quite a lot of landscape photos, but these are all local scenes, local to where we were hanging out. Um, and I thought they were good fun. I thought they were very nice old historical records. And then it got really fun because then you get the old uh, picture postcards and this is from 1920 and it says um, hello to you from somebody whose name I can't read and then these these are lovely they look like photographs and I did find somewhere that was selling photographs and I chose a couple where I thought I would be able to use them in a journal if the journal was telling a story look at this lady how severe is this lady she looks a bit crotch. I think she sat on a pin or something. But um, but there's a wonderful little record on the back. It says, a friend of my mother's. So I wondered if um, this belonged to a lady who was maybe going through her mother's old possessions. And maybe she recognised the lady in the photo, but she couldn't remember her name. So she just said, it's a friend of my mother. She made a little record of it on the reverse. I thought I thought that was wonderful, really wonderful. And then there are there are other, other ones. This is... Uh, this is written in English, um, so there's some stories about um, who these people are, who they may be. Here's two ladies with a goat. This just tickled me. What would you? Why would you take a photo of a goat? But uh, clearly, it's what they do. Um, and this one um, with the, the stamp on the front, um, and there's a little message on the back. Your cousin embraces you from, oh, somewhere in the Dordogne, I think it was. And this is 1911. I love these old postcards, these old memories. Because by buying things like this and by using them in our journals and in our artwork, we're actually keeping these things alive. We're giving them a second life. So they had their first life when they were bought and they were sent. And then, uh, oh, a big caress. Is that someone called Norbert? I can't read it. But again, this is very, very old. Uh, 1908. Fabulous picture of somebody uh, very proudly displaying their, um, their swimming costume and lots of uh, writing on the reverse. And uh, here we go again, lots of, uh, lots of writing on the reverse in this. You can tell that that's old ink that's been written with a fountain pen. It's faded, the, some of the words, uh, the, the ink has stayed stronger than in other places. It's faded out. Um, here's one. <laughs> I think this would probably come under the naughty postcard category. It's a lady, um, completely fully dressed, nothing to see, um, offering a, a, a chap what looks like, I don't know, it could be a bonbon, some kind of a sweetie, but on the reverse. Wonderful writing. And then another one, 1904, I think this is. Just beautiful. To finish off this video, we're a few days further down the line because I've changed my, um, uh, my nail varnish. And I've got a question I want to put to you. Um, I'd like your opinion on something. So, as you know, my general pattern is I make four videos a month. I try and upload every, uh, once a week. And I make one Simon Says Stamp kit video. I make one Craftwork Cards card kit video. 
and I make two videos with uh, techniques or different ideas or different cards. Now very sadly while I was on holiday Craftwork cards went into receivership so that means there will be no more card kits from them. My question to you is do I go and join another monthly card kit club? My hesitation is over the fact that I've already got enough crafting stuff to last me the rest of my days. I will never use it all up and I'm sure I'm not alone in that. So I kind of think, well, do I really need more stuff dropping through my letterbox on a monthly basis? But if you still want to see um, card kits and the, the resulting cards or how I use them, let me know. If I do do another card kit then I want to stick to a UK supplier rather than uh, um, another American supplier partly because of um, taxation reasons because we do get hit quite heavily um, sometimes with things that come from America. So I have looked at a couple of other card kits such as Craftbox or Love From Lizzie, they're both UK based. Let me know, I'd be interested um, in hearing what you think. Now my other question and this is why we're a little bit further down the line in the video in terms of uh, there's been a few days since I uh, was last talking to you, is because my other question, I wanted to have something ready to show you before I ask my other question. So the thing that I want to show you is this. And I want to know if you think that alternatively, instead of going and getting a second card kit each month, I could use the time to make... Um, journals such as um, I mean obviously this was for my personal use but I've been working on this and I wanted to this is why there's been a few days because I wanted to actually work on something and show you and give you an idea um, this has got a lovely uh, tartan interior this is a fabric interior the other thing that I liked about the junk journals that I didn't mention earlier on is I really like the texture of them they're very they're so feely feely it's it's very very lovely um, this is a Scottish themed journal that I've been working on um, because I was I was raised in Scotland so I have uh, I have soft feelings for Scotland and I've been preparing some papers these are uh, watermarked with um, some different laces and with some stags as well so it's some nice Scottish themed um, watermarked papers there's some tiny little little um, stags on the front of that one and I'm going to continue working on this journal and pulling it together with those papers so I'll make them into signatures and I'll put them in the book and my question to you is do you think that the time that I save on a second card kit would be better spent making journals which I can then possibly sell on Etsy so this is this is something I've been thinking about for a long time and I thought well I'll ask you you're the you're the people that joined me and I wanted to know if I if I slightly moved the mix of my videos, see like this, in this wavy way, if I slightly moved the emphasis of the videos, would you guys come with me on my um, journaling making uh, adventures? So that's that's a question for you. If, you. if you think the cards is more what you're interested in, fine, let me know, um, and I'll take your comments on board. If you think that this is an interesting way to go, let me know. Um, I'd like to hear what you what you think about that. So. That was my that was my questions to you. If you have the time, um, please leave me a comment below the video and I will catch up with you. In the meantime, this has been quite a long video, so thank you very much for your time. Thank you for uh, sticking with me throughout. I hope you found it interesting and hopefully we'll see each other again soon. Take care.